Hello everyone, my name is Anita Ihiman and I'm really happy to be presenting my section today. Although I would have loved to do this in person, I'm still glad I get the opportunity to share this with you all virtually. So today I'll be speaking on the topic, how implicit bias affects diversity and inclusion in open source. Now we all know that there have been times where we may have acted less inclusively and with less understanding than we wanted to. Now, perhaps this could have been a time where you made an insensitive joke that affected someone's feelings or said and did something that was considered as microaggressive. However, your actions um, perpetuated a biased stereotype and it did affect someone at the end of the day. We're going to be discussing how this also affects our um, diversity and inclusion within open source. Now, a little bit about me, I am, um, Anita a human. I'm a developer advocate and technical writer, currently contributing to Chaos, where I am leading a project to help us understand how the impact of um, diversity, equity, and inclusive metrics um, on different individual and different open source communities, particularly individuals from underrepresented groups. I am also a community manager at Layer 5 and contributing to the Good Docs project. I am a technical writer also at um, AutoCloud and over the past three years, I spent most of my time actively um, trying to um, advocate on topics around cloud native technologies, um, DevOps tools and practices, um, documentation, community health, and DEI practices in open source. Now, so, Let's get into the section for today. During this um, talk, we're going to be looking at why diversity and inclusion in open source, what um, bias means and the types of bias. We're going to discuss um, implicit bias and um, the types of implicit bias. Then we're going to look at the signs of um, implicit bias and how implicit bias affects diversity and inclusion in open source. We're going to further discuss about our um, why we should care about this topic, implicit bias in the first place, and the steps you can take towards um, eliminating or um, addressing this implicit bias amongst us. So let's get into it. Now, we know that diversity and inclusion are a commonly um, discussed topic in open source. We see it in our documentation. We see it in our community chat platforms. In fact, at every interval, topics of diversity and inclusion always pop up. But then what exactly it, is it? Diversity on its own refers to the vast array of um, human differences, and then particularly those from um, who have been disadvantaged. Now, this could uh, mean that the unique attributes could be in their appearances, it could be in their, their uh, beliefs, it could be in their lo location, whatever it is, all of these are classified as um, diversity. And then inclusion simply is um, a system that actively includes and supports all of these diverse individuals, regardless of their differences or what they identify as. And so, um, in open source, when we're talking about diversity and inclusion, we are referring to an environment where everyone, regardless of their beliefs, their race, their background, or nationality, and even appearance, feel equally welcome to participate, um, feel equally um, welcome to um, even um, interact with other persons, and also um, make good impact or contributions within the communities that they are actually a part of. And um, open source also champions the topics of diversity because of so many reasons. Um, first, because of the obvious, which is open source communities are built on collaborative efforts of different individuals. And so um, a lot of persons um, come together um, to make these projects work. And so that that is a reason why um, topics of discussions around diversity and inclusion are always prevalent. We also um, champion diversity and inclusion in open source or try to champion this because it helps with um, project outreach, sustainability, increased productivity amongst um, team performances. And then it also brings diverse and inclusive, um, diverse and creative skills on board um, towards the team. And then 
it also brings about diverse perspectives that drive innovation at the end of the day. And in all, this um, plays a huge role in the community health that we are trying to get involved in. Now, diversity is a commonly discussed topic amongst our, our communities. However, we still see situations where minority groups come up to, to say that they are actually not participating in open source as a result of um, these um, challenges or these situations. And so why, um, why do we think that is, well, let's first of all discuss about biases and what it means. And bias is simply a prejudice in favor or against a thing, a person, an individual compared to another in a way that is um, usually compared, uh, considered as unfair. And these biases could be held by an individual, it could be held by a group, an institution, and um, also have negative or positive effects. But however, at the end of the day, someone gets offended by offended or even affected by these biases. Now, there are two types of um, bias, which are the conscious bias, like the name sounds, also known as explicit bias, and then the unconscious bias, otherwise known as implicit bias. So what exactly is implicit bias? Well, implicit bias on its own are social stereotypes about a certain group of individuals that have, have been... Um, um, implanted based on our experiences, based on our past, based on our, um, our origin, whatever these um, um, the factors behind it may be. These stereotypes are, um, affect certain groups of persons and individuals outside of our own consciousness. We do it without even being aware of these, um, these um, actions that we take at, um, sometimes. And um, like I said, it's often not intended, but at the end of the day, harm is done and it does affect different people. Now, previously, we, we know that um, in, open, in most open source communities, there was um, a trend of dom um, domination amongst the Western male developers compared to women, the people of color, the parents, or... Um, um, non-technical contributors, um, physically challenged people, and um, even people of um, marginalized groups and even persons who are not the, um, experts in the developer field, right? And um, we noticed that this was a common trend amongst most of open source projects. And there were um, research projects that were led by companies like um, GitHub to help understand this data. And um, it turned out that the um, GitHub survey, which, uh, which had over 5,000 participants, returned that 90% of the contributors were identified as male, while the survey also reported a lower percentage of um, women, um, non-binary, um, racial minorities, and also people who are not experts of computer science. And um, actually, 68% of those women who um, filled out this form indicated interest that they would love to contribute to open source projects. However, they're significantly less likely to because of um, the reception or the way things um, were um, carried out in um, their individual communities. Now, another com um, recent survey led by the Linus Foundation also reported that a vast majority of um, open source projects is um, about 80% is um, men and um, compared to 14% which is the women um, which is the women and then 4% which identify as non-binary and third gender. So all of these data help us understand the status of things within open source, but you'd want to ask, what is the reason behind this? Most of the times, it's not because people do not want to participate. Most of the times, it's not because um, communities are not making efforts to get people to participate. So what exactly are the challenges? And this uh, is where we talk about the different kinds of um, implicit bias amongst us that may have been um, imp impacting these um, um, the um the reception amongst other persons within open source and i'll start with um the halo effect which is a type of bias where um we have a tendency of um tuning towards um favoring people or um 
favoring people or treating people um, positively based on the positive impression that we have about them. Now, um, as the saying goes, the more you look, the less you see, where um, most of the times, because you have heard so many good things about someone or you have um, read so many things about someone, whatever judgment it is that you're trying to you know, carry out about that particular person is often based on those good things you have, regardless of the negative um, impressions that they may have made on you or someone else around you. And this um, halo effect has an opposing one, which is the Hunt effect, where we assume um where we assume negative things about a certain individual or group of persons because of the negative things that we have heard about them and at the end of the day the our judgment towards those particular group of persons is based on the negative um, terms that we had and then another um, form of bias that i like to point out is the confirmation bias this is where we favor or choose information that fits in with our pre-existing beliefs it does not matter what the truth may be we we'll of often um tune in with whatever we um, already knew or whatever we're familiar with now, and uh, a simple example of this was is me and my bias that i recently got became aware of so um, growing up, I always watched a lot of cartoons and movies, but in all of those, I noticed that the Asians in those movies were always the genius in the classes. And this gave me the impression that Asians were the smartest persons in the world. And um, this may be true, this may not be true, but that is just how I felt about um, Asians, right? So whenever I came in a group where there were Asians, I always say, yeah, this, this is definitely going to be a smart person. But then this is my confirmation bias in a positive because most of the times it was in a positive way but um this also takes turn in a negative way where we place our judgment based on what we know based on our experiences and refuse to actually counter that regardless of the situation or whatever um the um the circumstances might be another form of bias i like to highlight is a gender bias where um, we have a tendency to prefer one gender over another because we feel like the other gender will do better than the other. A simple example of this would be um, in uh, politics where we often see that um, the masculine gender is always um, preferred to take on leadership roles, preferred to take on um, governance roles in our, t our communities rather than the feminine gender because it's assumed that they would do the work better or they would um, actually excel better in those kind of skills. Now, another form of bias I'd like to highlight is affinity bias. This is where um, we have a tendency for to connect with people that have similar backgrounds or share similar experiences with us. My simple instance is when you walk into a hall of um, two different groups by the right people who look exactly or similar to yourself same um skin color or even same race and on the left you have people who do not look similar to you and um and um, there's so much differences glaring differences that exist between yourself and those um, individuals right um oftentimes we tend to um navigate towards people that look like us or even um take sides with people that look like us compared to people who do not. And a lot of times it's also involved to um, affecting our judgment towards those particular individuals. Now, another form of bias I'd like to highlight is the name bias, where we place our judgment based on how a name sounds. Oftentimes this um, occurs where we're placed in situations where we have to review applications and uh, make judgments towards certain things. And we don't have to meet people one-on-one -on -one or or you even met those persons one-on-one, -on -one, but because you're not familiar with how the names sound, you'd um, take, um, you favor those who um, have English, uh, um, similar English names that sound more um, appealing than those with non-English names. These are common um, kind of um, mistakes that we often make in our communities as well. Then we have the conformity bias. This is where we tend to behave similar to other group members in our community. And um, even if it contradicts our opinions and our beliefs, we still tune in anyway. Sim um, a simple instance is where we always go with the majority votes, regardless of what um, the, the results might be, always going with the 
the group with the highest number of votes, the group with the largest say, the group that actually takes the largest share. So it doesn't matter if that contradicts what you believe or if that um that particular choices you're making are healthy, but because the larger group takes the win, we all turn towards that aspect. Another kind of bias is the appearance bias, where we favor people based on their physical appearance, where we favor people because of um, beauty standards that we're familiar with or we are actually comfortable with. And so um, you see situations where someone, uh, um, some people would rather favor someone who is taller than someone who is shorter or someone who is thinner than someone who is fatter or whatever it is that this difference may be. We have the sexuality kind of bias where we treat people based on their sexual beliefs and orientation. Now, so many times people in open source come up to say that they they do not actually own up to their sexuality in communities. They just make the contributions and go simply because they have done this in the past and um, the treatment they received was not fair. And so they do not want to repeat the same experiences. And so it's a reoccurring thing in so many communities that um, so many persons are also unaware of. And um, there's different ways to actually um, identify or even know that you are being biased and a few signs to actually um, become aware of this as an individual is even to yourself, you might be the one on the receiving end or you might be the one carrying out these biases. Whichever way, some of the signs of implicit bias are microaggression. Now we know that nobody is going to come up right and say, um, I am not going to treat you fairly because I do not like how you look or because you do not have the same um, beliefs as me or because um, you are not able to do this particular thing and I don't like it, I'm not going to treat you fairly. No one is going to do that because that would definitely be offensive. However, um, there are different ways that people exert these um, thoughts and ideas in the way they pass out comments, in the way they give feedback, in the way that they also like com um, reply to other persons within communities that is considered as um, microaggressive. Now, you cannot uprightly say, um, this person insulted me or this person did this, but deep down as an individual, you felt offended by the way a particular um, judgment was passed or a particular comment was made towards you. And so another way we can also identify either we are either receiving or exerting implicit bias is the unequal treatment where we do not um, treat, uh, we treat certain parties better than we treat other parties or we treat other parties unfairly compared to how we treat other people without solid reasons why. Now, when you actually experience this and you try to find out um, the reasons behind this and the reasons are not actually, you know, what you would hope for, then you might just be experiencing implicit bias or you might just be exerting implicit bias on other persons too. And another way it takes form is through assumptions and stereotyping, com completely assuming that every single person should behave or think the way you um, you do or act the way you do or should um, see things from your own perspective is another way that you might be uh, imposing your beliefs on people, which can be, um, at the end of the day, be offensive to most individuals. And this could also be a sign of implicit bias. Another way is through our double standards. Now we know that every single person has a point where you um, do things that on a norm, you completely would uprightly say, uh, I'm not okay with this, but because of this group, um, this particular group, I'll let it slide. I'm not okay with this particular um, notions. I'm not okay with certain activities, but because it is this particular individual, I'll let it slide. Now, these are double standards come in several ways in how we make judgments, in how we interact with people, in how we even give um, feedback by the end of the day. And um, this is also a sign of implicit bias um, playing its role amongst us. And um, so how does implicit bias affect the diversity and inclusion in open source? Well, it does so in so many ways, but a few ways we can point out this is, first, it prevents diverse and inclusive nature, the diverse and collaborative nature of open source, because open source is a, a place where we um, have to like rely on the collaboration from different uh, individuals and different groups. Um, if we um, eventually, 
let this implicit bias take the best of us. We definitely um, block out the ways for other persons to get in on board and trying to also collaborate on a particular project. We also, uh, another way it affects is we tend to seek out patterns and this prevents inclusion because we follow the same uh, repetitive pattern. For instance, you're hosting an event and because in the past you use a particular format to accepting speakers, you still use the same format um, 10 years after in accepting and reviewing speakers without taking feedback, without trying to you know judge or look for ways to um, renew the process or even update the process this kind of um, prevents the inclusion because there's there's so much that have changed over the years or there's so much that changes over the years but because of this you do not notice because and um, you continuously repeat the same patterns now and another way it does affect is the implicit um, bias can also create unfair disadvantages uh, for instance, if you are on the receiving end of these biases, if you you are the victim of these biases, we all know that it can really be a, um, a cruel thing experiencing this or even sharing these experiences can be um, hurtful for most individuals because you know that you could have gotten into a particular opportunity or you could have gotten into a particular position, but because um, someone for some reason um, took um, took note of these distinctive features that you have and decided not to favor you because of that particular feature. It's always very hurtful whenever people come up to share these experiences and all and say um, the community behind it um, is not as inclusive as it seems. And so another way it affects is um, it's blinds are created blinds us from the creativity and innovation that others bring to the table. Now, so many persons have ideas as they come into the community. Now, this could be ideas that um, change the way we see things, change the way things are being done. But if this, if we actually use our bias to block this out, we are pushing out these ideas from actually being implemented. For instance, you're building a software and um, you do not consider the accessibility, but someone who has like some form of um, a neurological challenge comes up and notices and notice this um, this um, accessibility um, issues within your software. They will easily point out that okay, you could do this to um, you know support more accessibility on the website, which is a great implementation, right? However, if we actually uh, push out these individuals from coming in, we might not even become aware or we might never be aware that there is this particular need for an accessibility feature on our softwares. So this is just a minor instance, but it does go a long way to other aspects of our communities. And another way it does play a role in affecting diversity and inclusion in our communities is by creating unhealthy environments where at the end of the day, you, at the end of the day, you actually, um, have communities where so many persons have come together to say that particular community does not have a welcoming um, environment and it wasn't a healthy experience for me and if I do share this kind of experience I know that the person who hears this kind of experiences will tell another person and the person will tell another person and the circle goes on and this ripple effect will eventually affect how people perceive um, a community at large based on one person's negative experiences. And then, so why should we care about um, the topic of um, implicit bias and its role in diversity and inclusion? First, we often fail to see that the benefits of diversity, um, we often fail to see these benefits and um, also take advantage of it because of the lack of inclusive practices amongst us and our communities. And so we should care because we are humans. And so there is definitely going to be that difference and um, diversity amongst us, no matter how much we try. People from different backgrounds, people from the East, West, North and South think differently. And so that difference is going to be a continuous um, existing thing. We just have to figure out ways to, you know, accommodate that difference and then live um, or communicate um, in a more healthy way to um, support every single person, regardless of our differences. Now, another reason why we should care is um, times are changing and people are actually adopting new ways to get more persons on board. And this is through programs, through um, improving their mode of com communication, through um, also getting 
um, creating a more inclusive um, room for on the leadership and as well as the governance and on the community level. All of these are things that so many persons are taking into consideration to tackle some of these issues. So we should care about this because um, to follow up with the evolution and also help with the impact, the empathy aspect of things. Another reason why we should care is the community first approach because in open source, we are built or most projects are built by the community are built by the efforts of different individuals in the community and so it is impossible to actually have a healthy community without taking note of um, some of the things that are maybe affecting the health of that particular community at large and then it affects us all now if not for anything the fact that um, whatever we say or do will affect somebody else's feelings and it takes a negative toll on their the way they think about the way they feel about themselves and oftentimes it does affect um, people's people mentally whenever they experience some of this implicit bias and they do not it's never ab addressed or um, approached at any point within the communities i've had so many persons come up to say that the reasons they left the community is because they were not treated fairly and even when they brought these things to light no one did take actions um, and became accountable for it which can be hurtful to um, experience as a human being so it does affect every single one of us whether we uh, blind our eyes to it or not and so these are reasons why we should actually care about this topic that we're discussing today and there's several ways that we can work towards addressing this although this uh, unconscious bias are often not intended the harm often becomes really really um, great on not on the individuals alone but the community at large and the harm does happen to people so even if it's not intended someone eventually gets hurt and um, how can we actually address this or confront these biases first we can do that by creating more awareness about the topic creating more awareness about what exactly implicit bias is so as an individual you should ask yourself um, are there, have there been times where I was biased and if there are, how did the person in question um, re respond or act towards this? Is there room for me to actually improve on this? Is there a way I can remedy the, um, the problems that this must have caused at the end of the day? So you can do that by learning what uh, unconscious bias is as um, a community lead or as an administrator in your team. You can also try to become aware of this by taking um, self-reflections through the implicit association tests which will help you um, understand an implicit bias that you probably are unaware of in terms of relating with your um, teammates with in terms of relating with your members of the community as well and oftentimes perpetrators are unaware of their actions so it's always good to Educate your community about these biases and make persons more knowledgeable about what exactly this implicit bias is. Just as um, we are doing today, I know that so many of us here didn't even realize that um, making um, some um, side comments in a particular statement could uh, eventually hurt someone's feelings. Now, it could seem really simple to you, but another person who is on the receiving end eventually gets hurt. So educating the community about this is a way to drive more awareness on this topic and also encourage team members to speak up about it. The only way to know if um, someone has been um, offended or someone has been hurt or someone has been affected or a group has actually been um, treated unfairly is if this group comes up to admit that, yes, this is what happened. And if things were done differently, I wouldn't have felt this way as well. Now, another way we can do this is by accountability and feedback. So set diverse and inclusive uh, inclusion goals and being intentional about it as um, a team lead or as an administrator on your, on your team as well then go beyond the code of conduct. Now we know that code of conduct often just lie in most documentation and even some projects do not still have a code of conduct. However, if we go beyond just putting what should be and what should not be done and how it should be done or how it should not be done in our community, in our code of conduct, it will help a lot of persons to um, go through this code of conduct. And every once in a while, um, pointing out to this code of conduct and these behaviors that are expected in our code of conduct is also a great way to um, bring this to light and become accountable for 
this as well, then hold team members accountable. So whenever a, a, someone comes to make it, um, a complaint that they were treated unfairly, it's always good to you know invite both parties and then settle things amicably. Uh, it doesn't have to be in a public room. You can do it privately. And uh, it's always a great way because for some reason, the person who, uh, who was on the receiving end would just be happy that at least someone did care enough about how I felt or how I was treated and was willing to make effort towards it not repeating itself again. And so then consider the behavioral in um, interventions. For instance, creating strategies that actually um, advocates for some of these um, topics. In for instance, the inclusive naming project from the Linus Foundation, which also helps to tackle um, challenges of um, inclusive naming in our documentations, in our project, and all of that. Another is the conventional feedback, which um, gives you an idea of how to issue feedback. Of course, so many persons are not um, are not aware of how they should give feedback without hurting someone's feelings. Most times, people just give out feedback and although the harm might not be intended, the way in which um, other persons might receive this feedback um, might not be as expected. And someone's, um, someone gets um, affected at the end of the day. And we can do this by driving growth through exposure to diversity and inclusion. So practicing diversity and inclusion in several ways, leading more projects. We see today that so many projects and open source communities are creating um, DEI, focus groups and um, um, projects to help more persons become aware of it. Now, the efforts may seem small, but over time, the ripple effect will definitely um, play its role in the data because so many persons will become more aware of some of these topics that we're discussing here today. So many persons will see reasons why so many, um, some of these things we're discussing here today are a problem and um, actions will be taken towards it. And then another reason we can also do this is um, driving diversity and inclusion to be more than just a buzzword. So as a community manager, modernize your approach to accommodating contributors. Now, so many persons have this issue of, I can't contribute to a community because of the reception. The reason why I didn't uh, complete my pull request in this project is because the maintainer um, that was on board that day uh, re uh, received me in an unfriendly way or uh, closed my issue immediately I opened it or I was ignored after I made comments. Now, while some of these things were um, as a result of minor issues, we see that the persons on the receiving end do not see it that way. And so we should modernize the way that we welcome people in our community, the way that we get people to participate um, in our communities as well. Then let the data to inform your decision. So go through your data as a community um, lead. If it means doing surveys and research, just do that. And um, look back at your community. Does the, the data actually say that you're inclusive enough? And if it does not, you have to think of ways to improve on that as well and avoid generalization because this is one of the primary reasons why so many persons today are still uncomfortable with their contributions within communities because the same um, the same strategies that is used for group A is assumed to be good for group B, which in most cases does not work that way. And um, it can be offensive for most persons having to also experience this. And as an individual, while contributing or participating within the open source community, always try to, you know, learn and adapt to the differences that exist amongst um, your fellow contributors as well. You can do this by respecting their differences and um, trying to, um, you know, relate with their beliefs. And it doesn't mean changing what you know, but it just means being knowledgeable that yes, um, you're not the pers only person in the room and there is room for you to also see things from the other person's perspective uh, understand why they act the way they do and if there's room for you to point out mistakes that people have um, have made you can also point that out to help um, increase the communication and collaborations amongst yourself and your peers and then um, be more empathetic about um, towards the way that you relate to people trying to you know see things from a different angle you can you cannot um at every point in time be 100 percent right now so many persons will say 
I said what I said, and it doesn't matter who it hurts. It does matter because at the end of the day, your actions towards one person could actually impact or affect an entire community at large. So we should always be cautious about how we interact with people and how how much our communication affects uh, uh, people on a personal note. And then we should be mindful and self-aware. And I know it is unconscious bias and it happens because of our experiences. Sometimes we are not um, knowledge, knowledgeable about or even aware that we do these things until someone else points it out. Like for me, um, for me, I do know that there are certain times where someone has um, pointed out that I was biased in a way and I did take um, become accountable for that by first reaching out to the individuals in question. And so you should be mindful of how you communicate and be self-aware. And if these things are brought to you or if someone um, does approach you to say, okay, I didn't like the way the conversation between uh, us went, you should um, also begin to understand why and look for ways to reason things with the other persons. It's always okay to just address the elephants in the room and let the the healthy communication flow with amongst team members right and so the bottom line is diversity and inclusion means uh, several persons from different demographics are going to come together inclusion means making the room feel welcoming and supportive for every single one of these persons regardless of their differences and diversity and inclusion does bring about several benefits in open source and um, which goes beyond productivity which goes beyond just um the satisfaction from people it does bring in so many benefits and all and so community inclusion starts by addressing some of the biases amongst ourselves as individuals and there's no way to completely achieve this um inclusion if we do not become knowledgeable or even tackle some of the biases unsolved biases that continuously repeat itself in patterns amongst um our day-to-day -day activities in communities and so attending a virtual workplace diversity and inclusion takes the group effort so it doesn't take one person to um, achieve all of this but if every single person makes an effort at the end of the day we're definitely going to get a more inclusive and welcoming open source community thank you so much for listening if you do want to reach out here is uh, a link to my um, gmail or my email you can also send a dm on twitter at anita underscore ehuman thank you